morning and welcome to Evangel Online. We are so glad you're here. If you want to connect with us, you can find us at evangelwichita.org slash connect. And while you're on our website, take advantage of our online giving. It's so easy to be a part of what God is doing, not just in Wichita, but all around the world. Now, this morning here at the church, we're actually having our first in-person service in a few months. So it's super exciting. And if you're in town and if you're comfortable, we would love to have you join us next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. But if not, you can still join us right here for Church Online. Yes, and this Wednesday, June 10th, we will be starting our James Online book study, and you can sign up for that as the, on the website as well. All right, now as we prepare to worship God together, let's just prepare our hearts. So let's take a moment, bow our heads together, and let's pray. Father, we thank you so much. God, I thank you that we can worship you uh, wherever we're at, that we can lift up your praise and glorify your name. So Father, be praised in our worship and be honored as we study your word today. May your Holy Spirit guide us and illuminate your word. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name, amen. So let's stand together and let's worship.
overseas For you've always gone before You're leading me Where I can't see But I know you've gone before
for your powerful name. God, a name that is above all, a name that always conquers, a name that is powerful and wonderful and beautiful. God, thank you for ministering to your children. Continue to speak through your word, God. Help us to learn more about you today. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. We are excited this weekend because we are welcoming people back to our physical location and are just so excited to have people in the building for the first time in several weeks. Now, if you're watching this, whenever you're watching this online, we are excited that you are joining us today too. We are providing this resource so people that don't quite feel comfortable to come back to the physical location just yet, still have an opportunity to join us and worship together with us. So we are excited to have this online platform and to be able to speak into your life every week and to join together, worship together, and just um, come closer to the Lord together through this. So over the next coming weeks, as we reopen our physical location, we also have a lot of plans and are going to be updating this online campus as well. So Stay tuned and keep watching every week while you join with us together. We can't wait to see what God does through his church evangel. And I will say that if you do join us online, we can't wait to see you one day in person as well. Let's get started today. And I want to start with some comfort for a lot of us uh, that we can take today. Jesus, before he left this world, he promised the disciples and promised us as his followers that he would be with us until he returned. He promised that he wouldn't leave us, that he would always be with us. Now, it wasn't going to be a physical body, Jesus, but we receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has come and is with us in the world today. The Holy Spirit is with you. The Holy Spirit is with me. And I know that as I read through Scripture, as I read through the New Testament, even in the book of Hebrews, that that it tells me I can trust Jesus. I can trust what Jesus said that day because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I want to encourage you on this day. I am believing that as we move forward in our relationship with Jesus, he will lead us to a life of infinitely more through the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm believing that. That as we grow and move in our relationship with him, we are going to experience infinitely more through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with you today. You can take comfort in that knowledge. So today we are beginning a brand new series that I'm calling 23, and it's based on one of the most popular and beloved passages in all of the Bible. It's probably a passage of scripture that you are aware of. No matter what your background is, no matter where you come from, you have at least heard some of this passage of Scripture. So we're starting, maybe you already can, can guess where we're going. We're starting a series taken from Psalm 23. Psalm 23. This amazing psalm written by the most famous king in the history of Israel. His name was David. Now, this psalm was written during his time as king, but reflects back to his beginning. You see, David had a very humble beginning. He came from humble beginnings. He was the youngest son in his family, and he was simply a shepherd. He was often forgotten, a shepherd boy, that when the prophet came to select a new king, his father didn't even think to bring David to line up because David was the youngest. David was just a shepherd boy, but David was known as a man after God's own heart. And here we have this amazing psalm that he has written, Psalm 23. And what I want you to understand as we begin is this psalm tells us what God is really like. You could say this is a clear picture of God. So one of the goals as we navigate through this series and as we navigate through this psalm, is that when we get to the conclusion, when we get to the finish line of this series, I want you to know what God is really like, and I want you to know how God really loves you. And I want you to see how God really wants the best for your life and how much you matter to him. Because here's what I believe. I believe 
that the more you understand God, the easier it will be for you to trust him. And the more you trust him, the more you will move into a place to experience infinitely more in him. So I don't know about you, but it has seemed to me that the stress level has gone up in certain areas of my life over the past few weeks. You would think that during this season of of pandemic and different things that having extra time at home or a change of pace would make life easier. And it has in certain areas of life, but probably like many of you, the uncertainty of, of going through everything that we're going through, the uncertainty of even the future days or the days coming has added stress into your life. And that's one of the reasons we're going to study this amazing Psalm in Psalm 23 together. You see, we are all facing stress in our lives. As you look around at the people watching this with you today, you would say, yeah, we, we, we agree. <laughs> we are facing stress in our life. So we're going to talk about the seven greatest sources of stress in our life that we often face. And what's amazing, in Psalm 23, we find the different types of stress, and we also find their antidotes. And ultimately, I want to show you and point out to you how these areas of stress can ultimately interfere with your life of experiencing infinitely more with the Lord. So let's go. Let's turn in our Bibles to Psalm 23, and let's read this, these amazing words of David. Familiar words. Look at verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the, the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What amazing words that David has written in this psalm. So let's talk about our first cause of stress. And this is the one that we're going to focus on today. Here's what we're going to look at. Our first cause of stress is worry. Worry. So as you're watching today, ask yourself, what is it that you worry about? If you're honest, we all have something that we worry about, right? It could be finances, it could be our jobs, it could be relationships, it could be marriage, it could be our health. We worry about our kids. The the truth is we can worry about a lot. For me, this is a big weekend. We are relaunching physical in-person services here at the church. And six months ago, I never would have thought that I would be worried about what that looks like. But it's been on my mind these past several weeks. What's it going to look like? Is this the right time for people to come back? What should it look like when people come back? Are people going to come back? Worry. It's real. It's in our life today. But there are three problems I see with worry. And maybe you can relate to these things, but let me just point out some some problems I see with worry. First of all, worry is unhelpful. You see, here's the truth about worry. It's unhelpful because it never accomplishes anything. It never solves anything. Basically, worry is just the stewing without doing anything, right? I I, I take it to, to this example. My son has his driver's license now, and he's learning to drive, and he's figuring out the different things and aspects of the car and how to drive. And so I'm spending a lot of time with him in the car and we're driving together and and just learning things and the different nuances. And and basically, you remember when you learned to drive, you had to figure out everything about the car. I mean, things you take for granted now, you had to learn at some point. So we've gone from the full gambit uh, of learning about the car. And, And one of the areas that I remember is, is, is talking about the gears. You know, we have park, we have reverse, we have neutral and we have drive. And we had a funny conversation once about neutral. And you get in neutral and you can rev that engine as much as you want. But what happens? You never go anywhere. 
You make all the noise, all the, all the stuff, but your engine makes screams out, but you never go anywhere. And I find that in worry, worry has never solved a problem. Worry cannot change the past. Worry cannot control the future. Worry only makes us miserable today. You see, here's the thing I've learned about worry. It's unhelpful. The second thing I see about worry is it is unreasonable. Here's what worry does. It exaggerates your problems. It makes mountains of molehills often. It it makes problems seem much bigger than they actually are. And the more you review something when you're worried about it, the bigger it gets. Have you noticed? Think Think about this. To worry about something you can't change is useless. To worry about something you can change is is dumb. You should just change it. So worry is unreasonable. Third thing I see about worry is it's unhealthy. The body was not made to constantly worry. It's unnatural. Think about the physical results of too much worry. Many of you already know these things. There's ulcers, there's back aches, there's headaches, insomnia. You can list the things out that come from worry. And I've mentioned this before, that the only thing that worries in all of God's creation is people. We worry and we weren't made to worry. It makes us unhappy and unhealthy. So here's the biggest question then. As we look at Psalm 23, Mark, what is the antidote to worry? What is the antidote to worry? And here's the antidote that you need right now as you talk about worry. You need to believe that God will take care of you. Let me say that again. You need to believe today that God will take care of you. Look back at Psalm 23, verse 1. Here's the antidote we're going to talk about. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. If I believe that God is going to take care of me, I'm not going to worry. David says here that the Lord is my shepherd. I will lack nothing. Nothing. But here's the question you may be wrestling with, Mark. I don't get it. How does making God my shepherd show the antidote to stress in my life? So that's a very good question because many of us watching today do not have the perspective of a shepherd. So to understand, you need to understand what shepherds actually do for sheep. And let me just share some things. What do shepherds do for sheep? First of all, a shepherd provides He provides food, shelter, the basic necessities needed by the sheep. A shepherd, number two, protects. He defends the sheep against enemies. He defends the sheep against harm. Number three, a shepherd guides. He leads the the sheep when they're confused and they don't know which way to go. The shepherd will lead them. And number four, a shepherd corrects. Any problem that comes along He corrects it. That's what a shepherd does for the sheep. And the amazing thing is this. God has promised to do these four things in your life if you'll trust him. If you'll let him be your shepherd, he says, I will provide for you. I will protect you. I will guide you. And I will correct the problems in your life for you. If you let me be your shepherd. Look at the prophet Isaiah says in Isaiah 40, verse 11. Isaiah says this, God takes care of his people like a shepherd. God even gets more specific, speaking through Paul in Philippians 4, 19. My God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. God will take care of you as a shepherd. But wait a minute, don't get too far ahead in this Philippians passage. It does not say God will meet all of your greed. It says he will meet all of your needs. What does that mean? You know that there is a big difference between needs and wants. Parents, you get this more than anyone, right? You see this play out in your kids every day. They don't often know the difference between needs and wants. If God, or if, take the example of you and your kids, but if you were to meet all of your kids' wants 
Every time they wanted something, if you gave them everything they wanted, they would be the most selfish people in the whole world, wouldn't they? If God gave you all of your wants, you'd be the most selfish person you could be. He, and he, so he's not going to give you everything you want. Why? Because eventually you would just be miserable. But he said something better. I'm going to meet all of your needs. And here's something I want you to understand that we started the talk with today. When God makes a promise, his character is on the line. He is going to deliver. He's got to do what he says or he's a liar and he doesn't lie. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we can put trust in what God is saying. And if God has promised to provide all of your needs, to protect you, to guide you, to, to help you when you're confused, to correct the problems in your life, what does that leave you to worry about? That's a tough question. Recently, my daughter's car at, at college, it's sitting outside of her dorm in the parking lot when a massive hailstorm came through. And it did a lot of damage to her car. I mean, when I finally was able to go and see and look, I thought, wow, that was, they, these were some big hail, hailstones that came through. But you know what? We didn't worry too much about it. Why? Because we had car insurance on that car. When we turned in the claim to the car insurance, they fixed it. We didn't have to worry about it. It was covered. It was covered. Did you know in the Bible, there are over 7,000 promises for you, the coverage that God puts in your life. And you need to get in the Bible. You need to understand them. And when you understand them, you have to ask yourself the question, what is there left to worry about? You see, this is true when Jesus is your shepherd. Jesus, when he's your shepherd. So the next big question then is, if I need him to be my shepherd, how do I let God be my shepherd? How do I let God be my shepherd then? See, here's the truth about that. God is not the shepherd of everybody. He's only the shepherd of those who let him be the shepherd. He's only the shepherd of those who let him be the shepherd. So here's what you need to do today to allow God to be the shepherd of your life. He has promised to do all those things for you today if you allow him to be the shepherd. So let me just tell you, how do I allow God to be my shepherd? Here it is. Number one, you accept Jesus as your Lord. Now, look back at verse one of Psalm 23. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. But here's the issue I need you to understand. The Lord can't be your shepherd until the shepherd is your Lord. Let me say that again. The Lord can't be your shepherd until the shepherd is your Lord. Those two go together. You can't ask him to be the shepherd without allowing him to be your Lord. Now here's where it can get confusing. Mark, what does it mean to be Lord? It means to be in control. You can define Lord as the one who is in charge. So here's what we're saying. Jesus is Lord in your life if he's calling the shots in your life. If he's not calling the shots in your life, he's not Lord. It's pretty simple. And if he's not Lord, he's not shepherd. Because it says in Psalm 23, 1, the Lord is my shepherd. Look at the words of Jesus in John chapter 10, verse 14 and verse 27. Jesus says these words. I am the good shepherd. My sheep know me. They listen to my voice and they follow me. To accept Jesus as Lord means those three things. You know Jesus, you listen to Jesus, and you follow Jesus. That's what you have to ask yourself. So, so what, does, what does that mean today? Worry is the control issue. The root behind all of your worry, if you break it all the way down, is the fear that you are not in control of whatever situation you are worrying about. Worry is, the, is an attempt to control the uncontrollable. 
Worry is assuming responsibility God never meant you to have. Whenever you try to control the uncontrollable, you're going to worry. You're going to worry. Many of you drive your cars and you have those, those, those gauges and the, the lights that flash, check engine lights or, or check tire pressure lights or whatever. And when it lights up, there's, there is an issue that I need to examine. Whenever those lights come on, so you can see worry is like a warning light. Whenever you start to worry, the light should go off. Warning, you're trying to control too much. When you worry, it's warning, you're trying to control. The root behind all worry, that is it, control. Every time you start to worry, you're trying to control something that you shouldn't be trying to control in the first place. So the question is this. It's very basic. Who is in control of your life today. Who's in control? And the beautiful thing is that God gives you the option. He doesn't force himself on anyone's life. You get to choose who is in control of your life. You have two options. Either you can be in control of your life or you can let God be in control of your life. And the reality is if you're in control, you're playing God. And playing God is the root of worry. And if you're running your life, let me be honest with you today, if you're running your own life without God's direction, you ought to be worried. Most of the things in your life you cannot control, and you have every reason to worry. But if God is running your life, and if he's the Lord and your shepherd, you know that he can control anything. And that's a huge relief. So the first thing is you need to accept Jesus as your Lord. The second thing is, you need to begin praying about everything. Just put it this way, because I know that sounds so basic. You should pray about all of the things that you usually worry about. The great thing about God today is that as, as our shepherd, he wants a relationship with us. He wants you to talk to him. But you know what the pushback I get? on this area is from a lot of people is they say, Mark, you know, I really do not have time to pray. My schedule is so busy these days. It's even crazier right now. But I would ask you the other question is, do you have time to worry? If we prayed about all the things we worry about, we would have an awfully, we would have awfully less things to worry about. You see, worry doesn't change anything, does it? Prayer does. Prayer changes things. You see, prayer gets in touch with God, who is the one who can change it. You see, whenever I'm worried, the reality is I have two options. I can panic or I can pray, right? Philippians 4, 6, Paul writes these words. He says, do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about, watch this, how much should we pray about? Pray about everything. Tell God, tell God your needs. If you do this, you will experience God's peace which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. I would say, don't just pray about religious things that you think God needs to hear. You can pray about those things, but pray about everything. If it's big enough for you to worry about in your life today, it's big enough to pray about. You see, God is bigger and greater, and his ability is bigger and greater than your anxiety. 1 Peter 5, 7, you probably heard these words before, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. What's beautiful about these words, the Greek word for cast is to drop. Just drop it. It says, it says just drop it with him. Prayer can be an incredible stress reliever. It says cast it, cast it, drop it. But then it says cast all, so drop all of your anxiety on him. So you need to begin to pray. Accept Jesus as your Lord. You need to begin to pray about everything. Number three, I would say, to deal with worry, you need to consider one day at a time. Look what Jesus says in Matthew 6, 34. So do not be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrow too. Live one day at a time. So what does this mean, Mark? Well, the ultimate thing is this. Today, 
is the tomorrow that you worried about yesterday. When you worry, you don't do anything about yesterday. You can't control tomorrow. You just mess up today. The future, I get it, can seem so overwhelming. Even the day and age we are sitting in right now. So it can, be, it, it can be overwhelming when we think about it. So therefore, God has put it all in little bite-sized pieces for us. He gives us just one little 24-hour increment at a time, doesn't he? He's telling us, hey, live this 24 hours. And tomorrow, live that 24 hours. I'm amazed, and, and, and I studied the life of Jesus, and, and he taught his disciples how to pray. And in Matthew 6, 11, you see Jesus say this to the disciples, give us today our daily bread. I want to tell you a secret. Overcoming worry is a day-to-day -day choice. There is no pill that you can take to stop worrying. There is no podcast or book or, or something you can watch to make you stop worrying. There, there is no one spiritual experience you can have and you will never have worry again. Worry and the antidote for worry is going to be a daily choice, sometimes hourly, sometimes moment by moment choice in which you have to say, am I going to believe that the Lord is my shepherd? Or am I going to believe that I am my own Lord? Who is in control of my life? Who is in control of my life? So let me ask you, what's got you worried? What is it that causes you to fuss and fume and toss and turn, wondering to yourself, is this ever going to work out? What is it that when you think about it, you get that pit in your stomach? I want you to take comfort in the words found in Matthew 6 from Jesus, verse 32, he says, Your heavenly Father already knows perfectly well what you need, and he will give them to you if you give him first place in your life as he wants you to. You see, Psalm 23, the beautiful thing about what we're going to study, is this psalm is about a relationship with God. That's the antidote to your stress. You see, religion will not get rid of your stress. You need a relationship with your Lord. You need a relationship with God. You need a shepherd, someone who protects, who provides, protects, guides, and cor corrects. There's an amazing story about a Christian traveler who made him his way through Switzerland. And one day he came across, across a, 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 a shepherd boy, little shepherd boy, who he started talking to about the good shepherd and trying to explain to him the good shepherd who had given his life for the sheep. And, and he tried to teach him even Psalm 23. But this little boy could not follow and, and couldn't read. So this man made slow, you know, made it easier for him. He said, I will tell you how to read the first part of Psalm 23 with your fingers. Take, take your fingers and say this. The first five words. The Lord, the Lord is my, the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. That's how he memorized this little boy. The Lord is my shepherd. And a while later, the, the same traveler was passing through Switzerland again and thought he would look up the shepherd boy. And he goes to the place where he had lived and he, he finds his mother who in answer to the query, you know, where is this little boy that I met? And the mo mother said he had, he had suddenly passed away. And, and the gentleman was heartbroken, expressed his sorrow and he had hoped to see him again. And the mother said, are you the man that taught my little boy to say something on his fingers? And he replied, yeah, I was. And she said, my little boy, before he died, said to tell you if I ever saw you again, that he died holding his fourth finger in his hand. The Lord is my shepherd. He's yours. So I don't know what has you stressed out or worried today. But I do know this, God loves you, he cares about your stress, he cares about you, and he can help you today. The Lord is my shepherd. See, here's what I want you to understand. The Lord, there is only one real Lord, is, not, might be, he will be, he always has been, he always will be, my. Can you say that with certainty? Is the Lord your shepherd today? Is the shepherd your Lord today? He can't be one without the other.
when you can say that, when you can mean it, you are going to be in a place where you can stop worrying. You don't have to carry the burden one more second. It's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. As we close today, I want to give you, first of all, the opportunity to know Jesus as your Lord and your shepherd. Maybe you're watching and you've never made that commitment to Jesus before. The Lord is my shepherd. He is here for you. You can have a relationship with him. This is the day, this is the moment that you can choose to make him Lord of your life. He loves you so very much. God loved you so much. He sent his son to die for you so you can have a new life through Jesus. And through Jesus, you can have a new relationship with God. It's an amazing, amazing thing. So here's what you need to do. Right where you're watching, you would say, God, I need to make you the Lord and shepherd in my life. I accept Jesus today. Forgive me. Forgive me today. You are the Lord and shepherd in my life. If you prayed that prayer, I just encourage you to head to our website, evangelwichita.org slash connect. Let us know. There's also a page there. It's called Next Steps to help you take the next steps in what you just have done today. And finally, my last question, and we're going to be done. Maybe you're watching and you know the Lord. You know Jesus. But you need to lay and cast some worries down at his feet. You need to drop them today. You have, you have been distracted by the anxiety and worry that's going on. What are you carrying today that you can lay down at his feet? While you're watching, what are you carrying today that you can lay down? He's the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Thanks for joining us today. We are so glad that you decided to stop by. If you made a decision to follow Jesus Christ or you just want more information about our church, go to evangelwichita.org slash connect and one of our pastors will be in touch soon. Until next time. See ya. See you later. See you later.